Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to the brand new Output Caching added in .NET 7 and explain how it is the future of caching your responses for your ASP.NET Core applications. Now this is not to be confused with the existing response caching that we did have for a while now, this is a separate thing and I'm going to explain how they differ and I'm going to show you how this brand new Output Caching is absolutely fantastic and packed with features you want to use and you will definitely be using to do some really really cool and flexible stuff with caching the output of your application. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell, and for more training, check out nickchapsters.com. Now, just a quick reminder that I will be running my in-person workshop, Introduction to Effective Testing in c -Sharp and .NET, in a bunch of conferences this year. For now, it's going to be NDC Oslo, NDC Sydney, .NET Days in Romania, NDC Minnesota, and NDC London. All the dates are on your screen and you can use the links in the description if you want to get a ticket and come and learn with me in person. And now back to the video. Now, before I show you the code, I want to explain the motivation of why they did that in the first place, because we do have already response caching. We had it for years now. However, there's an issue with how that is implemented. That was implemented and designed to respect the standard HTTP caching semantics. That means that if you have a no cache header in your request, then the server will respect that and bypass the cache. And if you wrote your application in a way that you don't want the cache to be bypassed, well, tough luck because that type of caching was designed with those headers in mind. The no cache is only one of them. There's many cache related headers that the response caching could respect and do stuff with. The new output caching is completely different. Instead of checking those HTTP headers to determine whether it should or should not be cached or should be returned from the cache or not, the application directly has all the logic for its own output. And that is great because the previous response caching lends itself better as something that could be used by a proxy like Yarp or Nginx and all those services. However, when you want application level output caching, that didn't really fit the use case. So let's see how we can now implement output caching in our application. So what I have here is a simple API. I'm going to show you all the code. It's basically CRUD, but I didn't bother adding the delete because I can demo everything without the delete endpoint. But if I go ahead and I debug it, this is using a real database. I can go to Postman and I can list all the customers in the system. And as you can see, I have a few people in the database. In fact, let me just show you that this is a real database and these are real users in a running Postgres database. And I can go ahead and get a user by ID over here. And as you can see, user is returned. I can also create a new user and give it a different date. And then if I create that user is created, you can see them listed over here. I can get them. I can also update them if I want to. We're going to see all of that in this application. And also what I can do is I can say that if the name matches part of their first name, then I want only those users returned. So if I say SAS, Nick Chapsus and Chip Naxus are returned, but nothing else is returned. So I also have a filter for this endpoint. Now, database calls like this in a small database are very fast. However, as your application scales, you might not want to call the database every single time. And in fact, why do all the compute anyway? If the user is still the same and it hasn't changed, then just return something from the cache. And this is where we're going to introduce the brand new output caching. So it is extremely simple to get started. All you need to do is first say builder.services.add output cache on your service layer. And then from the point where you want the caching to start, because remember, this is a middleware. So if you have Swagger or authentication before, you might want to put it before the start of your uh, caching. But you can also use mechanisms to bypass caching for those services. And we're going to see them as we go. But all I need to say is app.use output cache. And that's it. You got started now. If I simply do that, then as you can see over here, if I stick a breakpoint, to this and I go and I call the get all endpoints. The endpoint is hit because we're coming in that method. But if I call it again, it is hit again because I didn't actually tell anything to be cached by default. Just because you added the service and the middleware, it doesn't mean that something will be cached. Now, the simplest way to cache something is do the following. You can go to the end of this method in this case and say cache output. And that's it. We don't provide any configuration, any time span, anything. This basically tells it, cache it effectively indefinitely now. So if I go back here, I'm going to add a breakpoint, go to Postman, 
call that then the first time it's not cached comes in and it is now cached so if i call it again the breakpoint is not hit because this response including the headers the body everything all that comes from the cache and you also have this edge header indicating for how many seconds this thing has been cast for so you can see as i go that it's also increasing so it's doing a lot of work for me behind the scenes now i should mention here i'm not going to show you in this video how to do this but you can also plug something like a distributed cache like redis to cache that in a centralized place for now i'm going to show you everything in memory just for the sake of simplicity of the demo now in this case i went and i added a policy on a specific endpoint but you can actually customize the way the policies work on the add output cache level i can do this and i can get an options object and i can say for example here add base policy and this base policy is me explicitly saying for example by default that nothing should be cached by default now this is the default behavior anyway but you can also customize this in any way you want for example you can say that if you have a request with and i can have a predicate here again and i can get data from the http context so if there is a request where it has a specific i don't know query string parameter now you should realistically not do that because people can bypass your cache but if there is a a request that says no cache in the header and that value is true then no cache and this will now allow you to have no cache if a query string parameter with value true is there you can also do other things for example with the path if is under a specific path for example under your css or your javascript you can also have a no cache policy now you can also specify pre-baked policies as well so you can have an add policy here and say that i have a no cache policy and then this no cache policy is a simple no cache and that's it which means that i can now go to my get endpoint over here again and i can say output cache and i can give it a policy name and i can specify no cache here and if i do that if i have an overarching cache policy but this has a no cache then the cache will be circumvented and we won't actually cache anything here you could of course as well have the predicate here so if you wanted no cache here you could also say no cache but having it as a policy that is predefined makes it easy to be reused everywhere and you could also skip the extension method altogether and say output cache using an attribute that we have now and you can say either no store true or policy name no cache and this would also work just fine now here's another very interesting feature because i have a query string parameter over here called name i want that to be my differentiator when i'm caching something for example i want to have a different cache result set when name is sas and a different cache result set if the name is nick for example so i can go here and i can say a cache output and i can say vary by and then i can specify what i want my caching for this endpoint to be varied by i can have a header i can have a query parameter or i can have a full-fledged value which gets the full http context in here i'm just gonna do vary by query in my case and i'm gonna say my query key here is name which is my query key value so if i stick a breakpoint here now and i go if i go ahead and i call the get everything endpoint then I'm getting a cache but when i hit it again i'm getting a cache hit meaning it is being returned by the cache now if i add the name parameter and i say sas i'm getting a new request in here and that is now caching based on that query string parameter so if i call again i'm getting that result set cached if i remove it the previous thing is still in the cache because i have this variation now if i say nick for example in the name i'm getting a new cache hit because that is a whole new bucket of requests being cached here and if i call it again and nothing is removed by the way unless i specify and i could specify it i could say expire and i can have a time span and i can say from milliseconds and have 5000 meaning that if i go in and i run this let's see how this works then i call that first time it is cached second time third time coming from the cache now five seconds will pass and the cache was expired and now i can go in again and recache it so it is very flexible you can chain mechanisms as well if you want which is very useful when you want to make a single policy now here's where this gets even cooler having definite caching over here and i'm gonna go ahead and run this application and then get all the users the first time i'm caching everything and then the second time everything is coming 
from the cache, if you can see here, I'm not really hitting that breakpoint anymore. However, if I create a new customer over here, then as you can see, that customer is not returned, right? Everything you see is still the pre-cached data. However, if I try to get them with their ID over here, they exist in the system, but I'm still getting the old data, which is bad because, well, how do you update your cache if you're indefinitely caching something? Well, here's the cool thing. What you can do is you can actually say over here, tag this with a specific name. In this case, I'm going to say just customers. So I'm tagging this output set with a specific tag, meaning that I can now, if I want, evict that cache by tag name. So I can say I output cache store and I can get access to the store itself. And let's grab a cancellation token because we're going to need it. And now when we create a user, what I can say is cache.evict by tag. And my tag is the customers. So I can say evict that cache that matches that tag name. So let me quickly just delete the user I just created from the database to demonstrate this again. So now I'm going to stick a breakpoint here and also stick a breakpoint here and just quickly run this. So let's go back to Postman, try to get all the users. And as you can see now, we're hitting that endpoint and we're getting all the users, one, two, three, four. Then I can go ahead and recreate that specific user. And as you can see, this will now call that customers evict by tag async. And now if I go back to the users, I can get the cache again because I evicted that cache and it's being rehydrated anew on the next request, which is absolutely fantastic. And you can use that eviction mechanism to evict other things. For example, in this use case where we're caching by ID, we, we also have a bit of a problem here. And ideally I'd like for Microsoft to somehow make it possible without having to make a policy. I haven't found a way to do that. But basically here I can say cache output and I could technically give it the same customer's tag and make sure it's evicted alongside the creation of any new customer. But the creation of a new customer doesn't really affect the existing cache. It only affects the get all endpoint and all the other customers that are cached individually are still absolutely fine. So what we can do to be smart about it is create a new cache policy. And I'm going to call it a buy ID cache policy. And that's going to be a full fledged class. It's going to implement the, the I output cache policy. I'm going to implement the three methods we need here. And now I have already implemented this outside of this video. I'm just basically ripping off the default cache policy and I'm adding a small thing in it. So I'm going to show you what it is. Here we go. And by the way, this is very scrappy. This is just to demonstrate the point. But effectively what it's doing is it is getting the ID route value, which is this one over here, and it's using it as a tag. And if this tag then it's evicted, only that cache is removed from the in-memory cache. So what I can do now is I can say, hey, cache this for individual um, IDs. And I can say X add policy by ID cache policy over here. And then all that logic will be triggered every time and it will determine how my cache is used. And I can go back to the update endpoint over here and say, after the update, let's go ahead and add the output cache store and the cancellation token over here. I can say await cache.evict by tag. And my tag in this case is the ID to string and then the CT. Meaning, let's just bring all of that together. Now let's stick a few breakpoints. We're going to go ahead and run this. Meaning that if I go here, get all the users, get cheap Nexus, and I go ahead and I get that user by ID, then as you can see, first request is hitting the endpoint over here, absolutely fine. Then any subsequent request does not because this thing is cached. And then if I go ahead and I update that user to be called something else in this case, let me make sure I have the right ID. Yes, I do. Then I'm going to evict the cache of that specific ID value, meaning that after the update, if I go ahead and I want to get that user, the cache has been evicted. And I did it in a bit of a hacky way, but I'm only invalidating that specific cache for that specific customer in my system, which is very, very efficient. Now, one of the problems you might have when you have caching like this is cache stampede or thundering herd. What does that mean? Well, if I go ahead 
and I paste this code over here. Then what you have here is a lock endpoint that waits for a second. So it's doing some work, it's simulating, it's caching for a shorter amount of time than the time it takes to actually uh, run the work and I have also turned off locking. By default, it is on, but I just wanna show you how this works. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this and I'm gonna bring the browser in because Postman won't let me do this rapid fire movement. So I'm going to bring my browser here and call that lock endpoint once. It is waiting for one second and then it is returning, well, zero because the count was zero and later was incremented. Now, imagine you have many users coming to your endpoint, let's say five in one second and you're caching something that takes some work to be completed, then if I do this one, two, three, four, five, very, very quickly, all five requests actually went in and they did the work in the method. This is an example of the problem I described where many people come in and they invoke the same cache before the work of the cache is actually finished, meaning that the work will be done many, many times until that first time that it will be cached. However, with a default behavior, which is allow locking uh, true and you don't have to have this here it will be true by default then if i go ahead and i debug this and i go back here and i call it once you're gonna see zero but now if i do five times one two three four five you only see one because that method was locked for the duration of the request so it was only cached once but at least now you know that you can also disable it if you want to now the last thing i want to mention is that you also have support for the if none much and the if modified since headers. The if none much has to do with e tags and I don't want to dive into e tags because they're a whole different topic in themselves and I want to cover it individually. However, the idea is that you can tell the application to not give you the customer back if you already have that same version of the customer locally and the e tag changes every time your customer in this case would change. So you put it in the header and you say it would look something like this. You go to the headers over here and you say if none much and then you have the e tag which can be anything um it's not necessarily the customer id in fact it is not the customer id it is a value generated every time the user has changed but you can say something like this and if the value was actually matched you would get the 304 and it's the same with the if modified since you can have a date here and say if this value has been modified since a specific date in time then give me the new one otherwise tell me it wasn't modified i won't dive too deep into those they de they do deserve their own video but just know that they are supported so this is just a quick overview of everything we have in here i hope you like this feature it's very very good to see that they finally adding this because it does solve a lot of the problems we had with response caching and i can't wait for this to be out to actually use it well that's all i had for you for this video thank you very much for watching special thanks to my patreons for making this video possible if you want to support me as well you're going to find the link in the description down below leave a like if you like this video subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well and i'll see you in the next video keep coding